I wanted to show you a bunch of interesting curves that you can draw. And actually I wanted to get my plotter machine uh, working on some number file brown paper and do some of the drawing for us. Well, I wanted to talk a bit about something called turtle graphics, which is something you said you were familiar with from school, right? Um, where you are basically controlling a little turtle robot as it moves around on screen drawing pictures. What are the instructions you can give to the turtle? You can go forward some distance, D say, you can turn an angle, theta, and then the other thing you can do is you can say pen down and pen up. Pen down is you're imagining this little turtle has a pen in the middle of it and when pen is down and it goes forward it will end up drawing a line as it moves but if the pen is up it will just move over to that new location no, no line drawn. So you do like a little example I suppose of a simple program that you might give the turtle and you know, we'll start we'll go forward uh, one unit and we'll turn uh, 90 degrees forward one turn 90 degrees forward one turn 90 degrees uh, forward one even i know what's going on there yeah i reckon you've drawn a square yeah <laughs> i think so but shall we check all right cool so i've made this um little turtle thing out of a top of a pringles can a can of hyperbolic paraboloids. Our first instruction was forward one. That means we're going to end up there. And the pen was down, so we've drawn that line behind it. Um, and now returning 90 degrees, which would be like this. So our new point is going to be there when we go forward one. And the pen drew behind us. Turn 90 degrees again. Forward one, forward one. Pen was drawing the whole time. You're right, we drew a square. And you can get more elaborate than this. Yes. But I'm interested in things that are still quite simple programs, but make more elaborate curves. I've got a version of this running um, on Mathematica. So if I do 90 degree, we can visualize what the turtle was doing. So it started off going forward, turn 90, forward, turn 90, forward, turn 90, forward. I turned right 90, that's turning left 90. So from now on, I'm going to just assume that after every turn there's a there's a forward one and i'm always going to just assume the pen is down the whole time so actually this program we wrote here we could just write as 90 90 90. so it's even simpler right we're just going to have a list of angles and see what we can draw with a list of angles so for example let's let's say theta is one degree and our program is just going to be theta two theta three theta four theta, five theta. Just keep doing that again and again, like what, what do we get? So I could do that manually. I could just put in one degree, two degrees, three degrees, four degrees. See, so I could just put in, in here and see what we get. Okay, it's, gone. it's going to be slightly curving up as it goes, kind of makes sense, I guess. So that's one degree above. Now it's going in another two degrees turn, another three, very gradual. So let's, let's make this more automatic. So let's do like 180 steps and we multiply by what a degree is. And this is what we end up with. As it gets tighter and tighter, it spirals into the middle. Let's do more steps. Let's do 360 of these steps. So what's happened here is that the turtle's gone into the middle and then it's ended up spiraling back out the way it came. So at the end, it's very small, but at the end, it's pointing back from where it started. It's, it's rotated 180 degrees. Ah. So now it's ready to go off and do the same thing over here. So if we set this theta to one degree, we're just going to get this repeating thing where the turtle's gonna go around, spiral, come back exactly the way it came, go around, spiral, come back exactly the way it came. This is very similar to something that's called an Euler spiral, also called a Cornu spiral, but those spirals are defined like in a continuous way, whereas this is all about taking discrete turns. What happened here is because we're doing exactly one degree and one degree is a, a 360th of a full turn, so we ended up going back to where we started, but we can get more interesting pictures if we make it not a 
like nice multiple, a nice divider of, of a full turn. Now what if we turn 1.02 degrees each time? And now we end up not quite coming back where we started and we do all these uh, dancing around and it's very sensitive to what you, you change that number to. So this is 1.03, it's a totally different picture. So it's kind of like getting back to ideas of chaos where this is very, it's very sensitive. Where you're going to end up after a long time is just very sensitive on, on that, that little number there because you can come out the spiral kind of in a new random direction. So we could, we could play with uh, this a little bit maybe. So I'm going to say we're going x degrees each time and I'm going to vary what x is. So this is going one degree each time. This is the original picture. And then as I change this slider, I'll be changing number of degrees. So here we go, a different picture each time as it increments. Wow. Yeah. Very cool. So shall we get the machine to draw one of those for us? Yeah. Cool. So here I've got code that does the same thing in Python. And it's so what it will do is it will generate instructions, which we'll send over this USB to the machine and it will tell the pen what to do. In this code, I've called this DTH, which is D theta, like the change in theta each time. And it looks like I've set D theta to this number here. Here's a number I've figured out is good because it stays on the paper, right? You don't have a guarantee that um, you're not just going to go off and like go off the paper. <laughs> the final product. Well, we actually we cut it off a little bit early because we got uh, impatient. <laughs> but this is the first few spirals of this one here. Let's have a look at what it would have been if we let it run for, for a bit longer. Here is what it would have done if we did it for 10,000 steps. Um, so yeah, let's see. Can we match that up a little bit? We got some of these guys going, but then it was going to Kind of come out and go out here. We basically stopped after roughly a thousand steps it looks like. We did 10,000. Then look it's kind of making a spiral of spirals itself. So you can see this pattern. It's kind of recreating itself and going out there. So let's do a hundred thousand. So there, there you go. So, so now this is starting to look like it's Odin. It's kind of macro scale version of a of a not. It's an Euler spiral of Euler spirals but we didn't manage to get the next level. This looks kind of chaotic. That would have been a huge piece of paper. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it would be. Look, can you, yeah, look at this, so it's this side by side scale comparison. So this, that thing you're holding, where's that on the big picture though? It's one of those little hubs. It's gonna be one of these little, yeah, hubs. So now I want to draw a Sierpinski triangle picture. This one's actually called the arrowhead curve. So this is the kind of picture that we're going to kind of try and end up with. And it's nice for the plotter because it draws a whole kind of Sierpinski shape all in one path. So you can see it starts up here, it'll end up drawing, you know, this triangle and this triangle, this triangle and it ends up here. You never have to do pen up. That's right. It's all, it's all penned down and each step size is the same and it's all just turning left and right. It's always either turning right um, 60 degrees or left 60 degrees. And so it's just how do you come up with the list of left, right, 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 left, right, left, left that comes up with this picture. Um, and there's a kind of interesting way of deriving what those instructions should be. We're going to do something called like a substitution system where we're going to making repeated substitutions. And we'll just have two rules. So we're going to have every time we see an x, we're going to substitute it with y plus x plus y. And every time we see a y, we're going to replace it with x minus y minus x. And here, these aren't actually pluses and minuses. Plus means, you know, turn right and minus means t uh, turn left 60 degrees. And we're just going to start, you know, iteration one. We just start with x. This doesn't have any instructions in it, but we're just going to keep applying these rules and see what happens. So at, at step two, you know, we, we're reading this and we, we see an x, so we replace it with what we're supposed to replace it with, y plus x plus y. 
And so now if we were to do this instructions, it just says turn right 60, turn right 60, which is not super interesting picture. But, you know, we'll say we've got, we go, we've gone forward, we turn, turn right 60, I mean, we go down like this. And then we do another turn right 60. And I've just drawn this picture. Not very interesting yet. <laughs> Let's do it again. So now we're going to use this other rule for y. So we're reading y. We replace it with what we're supposed to replace it with. x minus y minus x. We see the plus. That doesn't have any replacement rule, so we just copy it down. We see an x. So we replace it with y plus x plus y. We see a plus, so we copy it. We see a y, so we bring down x minus y minus x, which is the rule for y. Um, so now we could try and draw what this is like. I'm not going to do any, I don't want to do any more turning right and left by 60 degrees um, by hand. So what I've done is I've prepared a grid that should help. So this isn't cheating, right? I, this is using a pen on brown paper. I just we used, we used the machine to create this, so this is fine, right? Okay, that's fine. I didn't, that's I, didn't fine. I didn't print this. This is within the rules of number file. I'm gonna say like we'll let's start going forward first, and now we'll and then we'll do these instructions. So we're gonna turn left, and then turn left again. Now we have to turn right. Turn right again, turn right, turn right, turn left, turn left. So we've created this image here. It's kind of getting closer to a, a triangle, maybe, it's kind of a triangular shape, but it's still not got the detail of this Sierpinski triangle. Yep, let's do it again. This, this one had one x, this had three x's and y's, this had nine x's and y's. Next one's going to have 27 X's and Y's. So let's do it one more time. There we go. I think that's right. Mm -hmm. And yeah, if we did it another time, we'd end up with 81, which is not going to be good to do by hand. But I think we can try and draw this iteration by hand. Okay. And then maybe we'll recruit the plotter to help us with the next step. And um, what we're saying, minus was turning left and plus was turning right. Yeah. So, so we're, we've gone forward, we're, turning right means that we're going to turn right along here. Ah, phew. So that looks like um, getting closer to this triangles inside triangles look of the Sierpinski fractal. We got up to was this n equals three picture here. I've just programmed this this what we were doing by hand into Mathematica here. So you've got a substitution system where x is b and y. There's a rule for x and y. Um, instead of plus and minus, I've just put in the angles um, directly in radians of so pi by three, pi by three for the where we had pluses and minus pi by three, minus pi by three for where we had minuses. The next step up would be n equals four. So you know. We've We've got our, what we just drew by hand copied three times on each side. And n equals five, getting more and more detailed. N, e n equals six is nice. And here's a picture for n equals seven, which might be a good one to plot uh, with the machine. So we, we've stopped the machine um, exactly halfway through drawing this uh, Sierp Sierpinski turtle program. Just wanted to show you something um, about how it's doing the drawing. So here is halfway, and um, maybe you could, if you look at it like this, you can see if we reflected this whole thing over here, we'd have the full picture, right? And this is like just the vertical half of the picture. Um, but if, yeah, looking at from here, I can see each of the previous iterations kind of lined up one after the other, right? So um, we drew 
this one and this one by hand. Then we bailed and he started going to the computer. And you know, these are the previous iterations. Now we're gonna draw the one on top of that. So what we've seen is that the next iteration of this um, arrowhead curve, this arrowhead Sierpinski curve, it, you could do it just by taking all the previous iterations, lining them up, and then reflecting it um, in a sort of vertical or axis. Like cool. That. So we make it draw the rest of the picture? Yes, please. Yeah, cool. <laughs> So now I want to show you another type of turtle program we can send to the, to the uh, plotter machine. Like what if I just start sending the digits of pi 